Welcome to the Travel Man Podcast with your host, Ben. Welcome, travelers. You're here for another interesting episode. Sit back and relax, because on today's episode, we'll be discussing airports, and primarily the best airports to stay in if you happen to be delayed for a certain amount of time. So you're delayed for five hours or more, and you're thinking, how can I make the time go faster? What should I do? There's many options depending on what airport you happen to be delayed at. I'll start with Changi Airport. This is not just an airport, but an experience in itself. Being delayed in Changi is more a privilege than a nuisance, considering the amount of activities you could find yourself doing, from going to the movies to walking through different gardens. Changi's airport website even lists the activities you could do according to the amount of time you'll have. Changi has been voted the world's best airport by Skytrax World Airport Awards. Now, I'll quickly fill you in to what the Skytrax World Airport Awards criteria involves. Skytrax World Airport Awards are the most prestigious accolades for the airport industry voted by customers in the largest annual global airport customer satisfaction survey. The 2017 awards are based on 13.82 million airport survey questionnaires completed by 105 different nationalities of airline customers during the survey period. The survey operated from July 2016 to February 2017 covering 550 airports worldwide and evaluating travel experiences across the different airports' service and product key performance indicators. They checked for check-in, arrivals, transfers, shopping, security and immigration, through to departure at the gate. The World Airport Awards are a global benchmark of airport excellence and widely known as the Passenger's Choice Awards. It's interesting to see that they didn't have uh, entertainment as a performance indicator. Would have thought the travellers would have uh, wanted that part of the survey. I'll go through with you guys now for the top 10 airports of 2017 and what they have at their disposal. So if you need something to do, um, I'm sure uh, they'll, they'll have something for you, especially if you're delayed. Also, if you want to go and check out the full list, it's at worldairportawards.com and then you'll have to just click into awards. Then it's um, World Airport Rating. So just look for that in Google, I'll say. Um, so in front of me, I've got a list ranked about ranked 1 to 10. Uh, maybe I'll go through um, the hmm, how the top 10 fared in 2016 because I've got... I'm looking at it now, and it looks like, um, for instance, okay, I'll give you a brief little um, introduction. Hamad International Airport is six in 2017 for customer satisfaction, but it was uh, 10th last year. So in 2016, it was 10th. So I'll go through the rest of those later on, but we'll start with Changi. Um, Changi comes in at number one. Best airport in the world is Changi Airport, Singapore. Divides its activities into three sections, the first section being two to three hours, the second section being four to five hours, and the last section being more than five hours. I love how they've done this. This is perfect. This is really, really, really good. In two to three hours, you can peruse all the duty-free shopping you desire. That's all located on T1. T2, you'll be able to get locally made gifts to give to your family or friends. And T3, you'll want to make sure you've got a little bit of money in the in the old back pocket because uh, they've got luxury duty-free goods there on T3 as well as designer apparel. That's, um, that's one area I'll try and keep my wife away from. Now, in four to five hours, Changi recommends that you could take a stroll through a cactus garden, which is located on T1. You could also meander through a sunflower garden which is on T2. There's also an orchid garden to admire. Um, T2 also has a large collection of Asian eateries. So go eat something, have a bit of a walk around. All these are accessible via the SkyTrain. I've been to Changi a few times and I've never really given myself enough time ever to check out these gardens. So next time I'm there, I'm going to check them out and it's going to be really cool. Um, Also, in 
four to five hours. You could head to T2 or T3 and watch a latest blockbuster film. Both theatres are located on T2 and T3, and they have 24-hour access, and it's free. Um, There's also the Entertainment Deck on T2 that has Xbox 360 gaming and PlayStation 3 gaming, of course. PlayStation 3 gaming, that's pretty funny, actually, because we're up to PS4, so... I wonder if they're going to swap in those, swap out those old gaming systems for the new ones. There's also an Xbox 360 Connect station um, where you can play some sport. You can get really sweaty and then board your flight looking like you've run a marathon or a sprint. I know the only sweats I'll get are the meat sweats from those delicious charque gel. Oh, charque tio. I could never, I can never say this. Charque gel. Okay. By the way, all this stuff is free, except for the food. And sorry if I'm sounding a bit croaky at the moment. I've got a bit of a cold that I'm I'm really... I just can't get rid of it. One day. In five hours or more, you could take a free, yes, I said it, free Singapore City tour that takes two and a half hours, runs regularly. All you have to do is register at the Singapore Tours booth an hour before the tour starts. Just make sure you have your boarding pass and passport with you. There's uh, two different tours, actually, that they offer. One's the Heritage Tour, and um, that involves um, taking you through the architectural brilliance of Singapore, past and present. It's it's very beautiful. You'll visit colonial and cultural districts like Chinatown, Little India, which we stayed in. Little India is fantastic for, for Indian food. It's the best Indian food I've ever eaten in my life is Little India. Kampong Glam. Even um, the Merlion Park, you'll be able to visit that for some photo opportunities. The Merlion is the symbol of Singapore. Um, you'll also visit Kampong Glam, which I mentioned earlier. That's um, really good for having um, the ethnic um, look in its precinct. So it's a very ethnic-based place. It's very colourful. It's very, very nice. Um, the last time I was actually in Singapore, my wife and I were so sick. We were traveling with my brother and his girlfriend. I wanted to see some of uh, Singapore, but just couldn't muster up the ability to get out and do any more. I didn't get to see the Merlion Park, so maybe I'm thinking next time I'll go and see the Merlion Park and maybe I'll avoid that trip to Bintan Island in Indonesia, which is only like a boat ride away. It's uh, Bintan's a small island in the Indonesian Riau archipelago i thought it would have been really beautiful to go there the beaches looked amazing the resort looked pretty flash the pool was amazing we just drunk at the pool bar the whole time which was pretty cool um we thought it would be nice to stay there like a week before i would meet up with my brother and my girlfriend and his girlfriend in singapore the um but you know what we had something that was pretty dodgy um to to eat which was i think it was um oh like a it was a sandwich with lettuce tomato onion it was a real standard sandwich that you think oh how would i get sick on that so we were sick on that um we were both really really sick we didn't have enough um uh like medicine to tie us over it was very hard to find find medicine so Try and avoid being sick in in Indonesia, um, especially Bintan Island, which doesn't have enough um, resources, medical resources. So maybe I'll do a podcast on how to how to avoid being sick overseas coming soon. Considering I'm sick now, so but I'm not going overseas anywhere soon, so that's good. Um, there's also a city sites tour, so that's a second tour that you can go on. That showcases modern Singapore with a brief stopover at Merlion Park. Um, where you can see the Merlion. Um, you'll see that against um, Singapore's amazing uh, architectural background. Um, you'll also visit in the tour, they list that you'll see the Singapore Flyer, you'll go to Marina Bay Sands, the Esplanade, and a few other things. Um, the tour also offers a stopover at Gardens by the Bay, where you'll find those beautifully sculptured super trees. Walked right through there, really sick, and it was really humid. But it was it was really, really nice to do that. So very happy I did that. Um, if you want any more information, go to changiairport.com. 
and you'll just go into airport experience and then attractions and services and you'll see everything there. So that is where you want to go if you want to find out more about what to do in Singapore or Singapore airport more so. Coming in at number two is the Tokyo International Haneda Airport in Japan. It's one of two airports located within Tokyo. In 2015, it was handled, well, it handled approximately 75 million passengers, making it third busiest airport in Asia and the fifth most busiest airport in the world. With an airport like this, you'd have to make sure your passengers are happy and well rested. That's why if you're at Haneda International, you'd probably want to go and have a massage at Raffine Relaxation Space. They offer body care and reflexology for passengers to feel relieved after or before a long flight. There's also massage chairs and showers available 24 hours for free after you've enjoyed a relaxing massage and had a shower. Why not choose from 39 different restaurants and go get yourself something to eat? They vary in cuisine, which is great. Also, Tokyo Haneda offers 34 normal shops. I mean, normal shops, not duty-free because they've got 31 duty-free shops. Um, so there's plenty of ways that you can spend your money. Maybe take home a few last-minute souvenirs. Um, if you're still bored, there's a large and expansive observation deck on the fifth floor. From here, you can view planes landing and taking off with a view of Tokyo's expansive city line. Also on the same floor is the Tiat Sky Road. It's a corridor lined with model planes and planes of various airlines, and panels of various airlines more so. Uh, Sky Road uh, connects Tokyo, Pop Town, and Festival Plaza, as well as the observation decks. Tiat Sky Road also has four flight simulators, which allow you to experience flight, cost supply. There's also a pet hotel associated with the airport, as well as a weird urinal area for boys. I thought I'd pop that in because it's very strange and it's something that they they actually put on their website. So, what a bunch of weirdos. Did you know that on some days, the airport does free Japanese cultural guided tours? There's tours in English and Chinese so that you may just rediscover the airport. That's That's what they want you to do. They want you to rediscover the airport. Depending on the day, they have different performances playing. You'll be able to view these on the fifth floor at Edo Hall, which is the observation deck floor. Number three, Incheon International Airport. It's got a maglev. How cool. Maglevs are those, you know, magnetic levitation trains. Actually, there's no rails as such, so I guess they're not trains. Let's just keep them as maglevs. Anyway, you can take a maglev from the airport to Yonggu Station and from there passengers connect to Arex trains and the Seoul subway system. And it's free to ride, so that's pretty cool. There's six kilometres of line, so that's probably more than enough to feel, you know, the top speed of a huge 110 kilometres an hour. Oh man, I was so disappointed when I read that, 110 kilometres an hour. I tried to do some research and I I figured out the, the fastest is 600k an hour. But it's only a test maglev in Japan, so maybe maglev still got some, you know, time to to catch up. But I think, um, you know, they they just can't operate at 600k an hour yet. It's just impossible. It's just too fast. Um, also, I was going to say this information is only there for you if you need to leave Incheon Air International. So, if you're stuck here for a considerable amount of time. Maybe try and get into town if you can, uh, depending on how long you're going to be here. So um, you wouldn't want to do this if you only got 15 minutes uh, until you have to board. So be careful. I have something better for you, though. Ice skating. Who doesn't like ice skating? Ice and skating. Fantastic. You're not going to hurt yourself before you board that flight, are you? Anyway, ice skating is offered by Incheon International. So the ability, you'll have the ability to use an ice skating rink in an airport. That is just the weirdest thing. Maybe you can try this after you've heated up in the sauna and spa. The ice skating rink also has an ice forest connected to it. If you're interested to visit this, you can go to the transportation center at Terminal 1B. Also on this level are cinemas. There's also the Osiong Observatory, where you can view planes coming and going. Incheon Airport also offers a cultural museum. 
that you may learn the art of Korean handicrafts and also discover the... Oh, man, someone's ringing me. Mandy, you're live on the podcast. Yeah, I'm going to have to pause it. But that's funny. Maybe I'll just leave it in just for a joke. Mandy, my wife has just called me, so I will have to pause this podcast and get back to you guys. Where was I? I'm not sure. My wife called me, and um, now I'm going back over a few of my little notes. Ah, I know where I am. Okay, so we're talking about the Cultural Museum at Incheon Airport. They've got Korean handicrafts. Don't know if I mentioned that. You can also discover um, other, you know, pieces of art and so forth. Uh, they've got a UNESCO World Heritage. Um, well, they've got a few UNESCO World Heritage artifacts that date back around 5,000 years. That's pretty impressive, actually, for an airport. You wouldn't expect that. That's something that you can do when you're delayed. Um, they also tell you they have a free shuttle service to a 72-hole golf course. It's associated with the airport. Maybe do this if you have more than eight hours as a layover. If you're like me at golf, you'll still be there a week later looking for your ball and you'll have your 9-iron wrapped around a tree because of frustration. I'm terrible at golf, but shout out to my cousin Chris who just happens to be an ace at golf. Um, there's also some small gardens within the airport's complex. Um, if you've got a bit of time, you can check that out. Otherwise you can leave it for next time. Um, you can also, you can actually leave the airport on a free transport, uh, transit tour to check out what Seoul has an offer. If, If you want to, you can do that. So there's plenty to do. Um, it's just really up to you. You won't be bored. Uh, Munich Airport comes in at number four. Now, I've been to Munich Airport, but it was a very long time ago. Uh, so I don't think it'll be anything like like what it could be now. The airport actually boasts a place called Kinderland. Uh, so if it has Kinder Chocolate, then I'm in. But alas, it's for children's only. Parents have a place, but it's not as f- nice and fun. Although you can sip a c- uh, coffee as you wait for the kids to lose steam and then you pick them up and take them on the plane. I think that's a bad idea, actually. The kids get to climb on things, draw on things, play with things like Legos, and be entertained with trained staff for the measly fee of two euros for one hour, which is pretty cheap, actually. Um, Prices increase for each additional hour. This is where I take my kids if I wanted them to feel refreshed after a long flight from Australia or if I want to keep them awake at night. So um, don't worry, mums and dads. Munich Airport has something for you too. It incorporates fancy dress, um, the month of October, and beer. You're probably thinking, what is Ben on about? If you answered with a shrug, then you're right, because I don't even know what I'm on about. Actually, I do. Munich Airport has Oktoberfest that runs over 16 days through the month of October. They've even crafted a specialty beer for the occasion, a festival beer, they call it. The airport also hosts the only airport brewery in the world called Air Brawl, which is located in a tavern with an outdoor-covered beer garden. How cool is that? I could definitely sink a few beers with some friends there. Also, also inside of the airport, you'll see some staff dress up in silly traditional German clothing like Lederhalsen and Dirndl dresses. This is the fifth time that Munich Airport has put on Oktoberfest at the airport. I think they should continue doing it. Even Lufthansa Airlines have their cabin crew dress in traditional Bavarian costumes. How cool. Also, as well as having uh, Oktoberfest, Munich Airport offers you a museum, excellent food, plenty of drinks, lots of shops. You'll never be bored here. Hong Kong International Airport. I liked you better when your pilots had to work harder to narrowly miss buildings as they banked into their approach to land on the runway of the old airport, which is KTAC. This is what made pilots. I still think pilots miss the challenge of the landings at KTAC. Go onto YouTube now, pause the podcast, and look up, uh, type in landings at KTAC. I think you'll be impressed. I really enjoyed them. Oh, how I miss the old Hong Kong International Airport. 
I still remember as a kid being in the cockpit of a Cathay Pacific 747 that was coming in to land at KTAC Airport as my mother used to work for them. It was exhilarating watching the pilots pull on yank levers and wrestle the plane to make a safe landing. You couldn't do that now, actually. I was very lucky as a kid. Um, I digress. Digress. The new Hong Kong International Airport is magnificent in comparison. I'm sure KTAC never had an Aviation Discovery Centre, otherwise known as an ACDC or an ADC, uh, which guides you through interesting aviation ex- exhibits and fascinating topics, as well as Hong Kong's aviation development through the years. There's also a Sky Deck. The ADC is near the Food Hall on departure level 6. Hong Kong International Airport also boasts a dreams come true in education park. It's a mouthful, but the kids will be satisfied. They get to don outfits and figure out if they want to ever work in the industry. Kids get to develop independence, teamwork and social skills. It's also on the same level as ADC. There's even a place for adults that enjoy golf. Golf has become a regular thing in this podcast, unexpectedly. Expect me to not ever put a podcast up about the best golf courses in the world, as I don't really care for it. Maybe because I'm so bad at it. Although, Barn Bugle Golf Course in Tasmania, uh, in Australia, apparently is breathtaking. I've seen photos online. Look it up, Barn Bugle. It's, it's amazing. It's very, it's very hard to play with no trees, but it's got plenty of sand dunes to really stuff your day up. Now, back to the green live air. This is a 9-18 to 18 hole golf course that's fully computer simulated. Maybe I'd give this a go, as I know I wouldn't be losing too many golf balls. If you don't want to do any of this, you could always shop and eat to your heart's content. Or just go and watch a movie at the largest IMAX screen in Hong Kong. They have 3D options as well as 2D options. Hamad International, Qatar, is the sixth best airport and is, and, and is the only Middle Eastern airport on the list which is quite surprising. I thought Dubai would have made this list. It boasts plenty of upmarket shops like Harrods, for example, and has an assortment of international cuisine for you to try. Like a few of the other top five airports I've spoken about, Hamad International also features a vitality, wellness and fitness center, which has a 25-meter temperature-controlled swimming pool, squash courts, a gym, hydrotherapy tub, which I need drastically at the moment, and a shower room. This isn't free, it comes at a cost as its entrance fee starts at 175 Qatari dollars or QAR. Hamad International also offers for a fee squash courts and anti-jet lag massages as well as facials and other body treatments. Their Vitality Spa price list is large and varied with many options for the ladies. If manicures aren't for you then maybe you'd like to relax and enjoy the art that Hamad International is famous for. There's numerous sculptures and works made by local artists and well-known artists that litter the terminal. This is thanks to a curated partnership with Qatar's museum. That's pretty cool. Maybe next time I'll stop at Qatar and um, check out that little museum there. Now, Chubu Centra Air International Airport, Nagoya. That is a mouthful. Let's just call it Chubu International or Nagoya Airport. Let's go Chubu International, Japan's second airport in the top 10 and ranked at number 7 respectively. Japan must be doing something right. Apart from, apart from what most things regular airports have like duty-free shopping, eating establishments, in most cases access to free Wi-Fi, massage chairs and so forth, Chubu has an observation deck suited to the aviation enthusiast. At 300 metres long, the upper deck is said to have the closest airline observation point in all of Japan. The observation deck is only 300 metres away from the runway and 50 metres away from the taxiway. So it's a perfect vantage point for any aeronautical geek to take photos of his beloved 747. 300 metres sounds far far for, for me, but it must be pretty close, actually. When you think about it, the only chance you can take um, photos other than being on an observation deck is from outside the airport. So... It would be pretty cool, actually. As well as checking out planes coming and going, you can also, on a clear day, view the shoreline of the Mi Prefecture. 
M-I-E, I'm guessing a Mi Prefecture, yes. It can be viewed from the same vantage point. You can even see the boat sail past, coming and going from Nagoya's main seaport. Make sure you're here around dusk, so that you can see the sunset beyond Isi Bay. I'm sure it'd be a spectacular sight at night. Now, if you really want to splurge your yen, then why not go to the airport's bathhouse with a view otherwise known as Fu no Yu, which for a lot of the part, I was typing no you fu or you fu no, but it's fu no no. No, it's fu no you. This bathhouse is even more special as it overlooks the runway and Isir Bay. Just imagine you can soak for an hour or so before your flight, enjoy the scenery of Isir Bay, and if it's dark, you could watch the sun go down. You could even just watch the planes come and go. Sounds pretty good to me until you hear that your plane is boarding and you only have a few minutes till departure. Drop mic. Okay. If you have any other time, you could go to the Oral Tokoname Tourist Information Counter. Go put a bet on the Tokoname boat racing event that's held regularly. Tickets are sold over the counter. The counter offers also offers travellers a variety of things to see, as well as a famous golden toilet. It was made famous at the Shanghai Expo. This uh, this golden air uh, <laughs> golden toilet is famous because it has been made to be a bacteria killing machine. Until I use it, and it, and it also <laughs> cleans and flushes itself. I love this thing. That's good to know. What a toilet! Additionally, the toilet has an SD card slot which is preloaded with some jazz, some really cool Japanese jazz by a very well-known Japanese uh, jazz pianist named Yoshiko Kishino. I think that's how I'd say it. It costs a staggering 100,000 yuan. That's 210, 210, that's 2010 numbers. So $100,000 now, 2017. Go, that would be maybe a few hundred thousand. Gold is actually quite a soft metal, if you didn't know. I'm wondering if after 10 years you'd start to mould your backside, backside into the seat. All right, moving on, moving on. Let's start to be a bit more sensible. Zurich Airport comes in at number eight. After dropping one position from number seven, Zurich Airport wants to show you behind the curtains. They want to show you what they have as... As, as they offer you an interesting guided bus tour that can show you around certain sections of the airport to give you a feel of how it works, like the aeronautical operations area, for example. You also visit hangars, the area for fire rescue brigades, and an aircraft maintenance area. You also do this by crossing the airport's aprons. They're those, you know, those areas where the planes are parked, unloaded, reloaded, refueled, boarded, Checked over, basically where the planes hang out. The bus even crosses the airport runway intersection. This tour goes for about an hour and a quarter. The tour also includes an area dedicated to nature conservation, where they've been successful in merging nature and technology. Booking is usually six weeks in advance. It starts at 250 uh, Czech francs. It fits up to 20 people. That's, oh, that's pretty cool. <coughs> Sorry about that. As well as exiting bus tours, as well as the exciting bus tour, Zurich Airport also offers passengers an airport tour that takes you behind the scenes and you see how how the check-in works and how the airside centre works, uh, which is the hub for all departing passengers. The tour also incorporates the Sky Metro shuttle with a tour of Dock E where you can interact with 27 aircraft handling stands. This is a two-hour tour, which is all by foot, so you may need to find a locker for any baggage you may be carrying with you. You'll have to book six weeks in advance to sign up for this tour. Um, they're not; th These aren't the only tours that Zurich Airport offers, actually. They also offer scenic tours from five different companies. You can enjoy a joyride in a helicopter or an aeroplane. They'll fly you around Zurich in the beautiful fields of Switzerland. I'd say you'd have to have a fair bit of uh, leftover spending money to do this. Oh, I couldn't do it. Zurich also offers you the uh, usual fare of airport food and drink and the usual duty-free shops you find within the airport. 
If you connect at the airport and are not in transit, they also offer you the ability to hire sporting equipment like rollerblades from the 90s and strange Nordic walking poles that you can explore the nature um, that you can explore the nature that surrounds the airport. That would be cool. If you're too tired to do any exploring, then you can take a shower in the many locations that are around the airport, or better yet, book a room in the transit hotel within the airport. Even if it's just for a few hours, have a lie down um, on the bed and a beach trying to feel comfortable on a roll of plastic chairs um, makes you feel revitalized. I always try and see if I can book a room if I'm going to be more than seven or eight hours. Um, there's even a special rest area with a bed and table separated by walls, kind of like an official cubicle. Lay your head down for an hour and you'll feel better for it. And it's always better to book these facilities in well in advance. Once you'll relax, there's a cool observation deck which offers you multimedia binoculars that give you the ability to view the planes better than with your own eyes. The binoculars are called airport scopes. How original. Looking at these pictures online, the planes look very close, so I'm not sure why you'd need to use them. They also have a miniature airport for kids to play and enjoy in. I wish I could use that. And now, if you're wondering if my voice sounds a bit different today, it's because my actual voice sounds better. And I've uh, started, um, well, I've cut the last part of the podcast. So the first 30 minutes, I sound like a broken horse. Now I feel much better. Um, Still a little bit scratchy, but that's okay. I really wanted to finish the rest of this podcast. So here we go. Heathrow Airport comes in at number nine. I still remember my first and only visit to Heathrow Airport, just like it was yesterday. We flew in at night, totally buggered from around 35 hours or so of travel from door to door, I guess. Our first experience on English shore was huge queues to get through immigration. It was terrible. It was seven years ago, mind you. I still remember every leg of our flight from Melbourne. After departing Melbourne for Dubai, which I'm surprised didn't make the top 10 list, although its close neighbour made it, We started with a 14-hour flight from Melbourne, I think we even were delayed a little bit, and then a stopover with a few hours in Dubai. I don't generally do longer stopovers than a few hours, unless I am delayed. If you spend a little extra money, you'll have less waiting time at airports. So that's a a really big hint for uh, travellers. The more the, the airplane ticket costs, the shorter the turnaround times between planes. You usually find the cheaper flights will have um, longer time spent in airports. So you'll have to wait longer for the next flight. But on the other hand, it will be cheaper for you to fly. Now, the flight from Dubai to London was hard. I was so sick. I remember being right at the front of the A380 with my wife and a UK DJ called DJ Straight Jackets, which is a... He's a really cool guy. Don't know what he's doing now. I don't even know if he's still a DJ. Um, He probably thought I was the most uncoolest bloke in the world because I vomited in that sick bag and I dry reached and my eyes popped right out of my skull. I only had an hour to go. I should have waited, but I couldn't. It was just brewing inside of me like like a terrible vanilla slice that I'd eaten and then I'd mix that with some beef jerky and I don't know my guts were terrible but I I blame turbulence and anxiety I was feeling terrible for myself and then I had to wait for what like felt like hours in a line waiting to leave Heathrow's airport's immigration this was my first introduction to London we arrived at night so all we wanted to do was sleep look I'm not sure what the lines are like these days but I'm sure it's probably improved Um, Heathrow boasts a heap of good quality uh, food venues and shops dedicated to fashion. One of the venues is Gordon Ramsay's Plain Food. It would have been really funny if they uh, named it or um, spelt it P-L-A-I-N food instead of P-L-A-N-E food. You get it? Because I think his food's um, plain. Anyway, you can only go to this establishment establishment if you're heading out of London Heathrow. It offers you a unique dining experience with a new Asian bar where chefs in the open kitchen prepare meals in front of their guests. As well as good food, 
There's also a nice cocktail menu. You can even have a choice to take your food away with you. It's called the grab and go meal so that you may eat the plain food at 40,000 feet above sea level. That's pretty cool. I just sounded like a Kiwi. Kiwi, I just said sea level. Um, kids eat free at all the Gordon establishments. The kids even get uh, to order from Gordon da- Gordon's daughter's menu, which is titled Matilda Ramsey Tilly, Tilly's Treats Menu. Try saying that really quick. Matilda Ramsey's Tilly Treats Menu. Matilda Ramsey's Tilly Treats Menu. Actually, that's pretty easy. Uh, for a fee, uh, there's the Be Relax Spa in Terminal 5 which offers services to passengers needing to get pampered or to have a massage to help them relax before a long flight. Uh, Saying that, if you're in transit, this won't help you. As to how I've understood it, it seems that the service is only available post-security. If you are flying home from London, then this is a good option, even though it's fairly expensive at $97 USD. One of your options is to get an anti-jet lag moisturizing facial that will go for about an hour. And at departures on level 5, the airport has something they call the Expo Art Display. These are different artworks and installations that rotate. So I guess it's monthly or something. They'll keep you engaged as you're waiting for your flight. Yeah, it will. I mean, like, it'll keep you interested. The airport also offers you a bunch of premium services like lounges and so forth. There's not much in their premium services which would aid you uh, in a devastation of a long delay. All right. Moving on, Frankfurt Airport is the second of the German airports to make the list. This round, this rounds out our top 10. I've been there and it's not bad. I was there about seven years ago, so a lot may have changed. These days, if you're at Frankfurt Airport, um, there's a very helpful welcome center located on Terminal 1, Concourse B, which is at the arrival. So when you disembark, if you need someone to point you in the right direction, or if you're lost on lost or are looking for something specific like information on hotels or connecting flights then they'll have no problems to help you out only if you're only if you're arriving so if you're departing you know um that's that's life you just can't use it and just like munich art Air, airport just like munich airport frankfurt airport will be a celebrating oktoberfest in their own style you'll have access to the traditional beer tent souvenirs music and other shopping items they also have a special beer keg tapping ceremony at Deutsch Deutsch restaurant in Pier Z there'll be Bavarian Bros 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 they were the worst 80s band in the world Bavarian brass bands and test your strength game as well as a photo archive on the history of Oktoberfest to peruse there will also be hosts handing out special Oktoberfest discount coupons for you to use within the airport Throat's getting scratchy. That's okay. Let's continue. Frankfurt Airport also has a bunch of options for you if you're delayed or waiting for your flight. You can watch a movie in the movies, movie world's room with different cubicles showing plenty of new films, documentaries and series, all free of charge, which is fantastic. You want everything to be free. There's also Gaming World, which is suitable for kids and adults alike. Select from a variety of games, ranging from Tetris to dancing games, all games are what it looks like are wall mounted and are free. Gaming World and Movie World are located on Terminal 1. Just like Zurich Airport, Frankfurt offers tours around the airport for passengers. There's nine in total. They are XXL Tour, Fire Department Tour, Sunset Tour, Starter Tour, A380 Extra Tour. I love the A380. Mini Tour. I love the A380s, not a tour, by the way. Mini Tour, Maxi Tour ready to take off tour and an after work tour there's more tours than you can chuck a hat at that's not a term they all offer you unique and varied experiences if you want more information then you can go to their website now that rounds out the top 10 remembered what i said earlier in the podcast because i do i said i'd tell you where they finished in 2016 so starting from number one to number 10 and then I'll give you the 2016 uh, rankings too. So Changi Airport Singapore finished first in 2017 and finished first in 2016. Tokyo Haneda Airport finished second in 2017 and fourth in 2016. So it jumped to Incheon International Airport finished 
third in 2017, but finished second in 2016. Munich Airport finished fourth in 2017 and third in 2016. So you got the top four there just switching places. Actually, the top five, Hong Kong International has not moved a place. So 2017 and 2016, it finished fifth. Hamad International is a big mover. It's gone from number 10 in 2016 to number six in 2017. Voice is getting croaky. Chubu Centra International Airport, Nagoya, went from finishing number six in 2016 to number seven in 2017. So it went down. Zurich Airport uh, swapped places as well. It went from number seven to number eight in 2017. Heathrow Airport moved down a spot from eight in 2016 to number nine in 2017. Frankfurt Airport skips into the top 10. It was number 12 in 2016. Now is number 10 in 2016. Now, that will nearly do it. I just wanted to say... uh, Getting uh, that call over the loudspeaker that your plane has been delayed can send you shivers down your spine. It's a fear that is common with most travellers. So, hopefully this list helps you. But what do I do if my plane is delayed or worse still, cancelled? So I'll tell you what I do. Well, having so much time to waste is a frustrating thing when all you want to do is get to your destination. If that's going home or heading abroad... The airports that I've run through today with you are perfect candidates to entertain you while you're stuck waiting for your flight. I speak from experience as I've been in the scenario a few times. I was once delayed five hours in Kuala Lumpur after a highly enjoyable trip with my wife and friend in Japan. We'd planned our trips to stop in KL and then we'd change planes and have a couple of hours to kill before we jumped on the next flight out of KL to Melbourne. It's always good to be prepared. I always make sure I have plenty of reading material or things loaded on the iPad or laptop so I don't go insane. Unfortunately, you can never be prepared for a cancellation. You never can be. But you know what? I should have said, when we were in KL, we were looking at um, upgrading our tickets to business class because we thought, you know what, we've got time to kill. Is it a possibility? Now... My friend was successful, so he'd up, he'd um, uh, updated or uh, spit it out, Junior. It's not like it's hard to say upgraded, is it? Anyway, um, where was I? I was uh, fumbling around trying to tell you how my friend had been upgraded to business class. We had gotten on the plane thinking, uh, you know what, we haven't been upgraded, but you know what, happy ending to that story. Stewardess came up to us and she said, are you Ben and Mandy? Uh, We said, yeah, we are. Uh, You've been upgraded. I went, okay. And I was just, whoo, it was amazing. Nah, we were upgraded. So happy. Thanks, AirAsia X. You're fantastic. So it's always good to be prepared. I always make sure I have plenty of reading material, all things loaded onto the iPad. I already said that. You know what? I think it's time to finish. Uh, Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the podcast, as I know I enjoyed bringing it to you, even with a scratchy voice, which will hopefully unscratch itself soon. Please subscribe to the podcast, and I'll be bringing out another podcast very soon. Ciao. And by the way, you can subscribe on iTunes and leave me that five-star um, rating thing that I like you to do. You can also find me on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Travelman. One word, Space Podcast. And um, I've got a website too, but it's got a really long name. But from the uh, podcast, you can find the website. So it's all good. Um, take care. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.